click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design 1. Right now, we are learning about the basics of machine design and we are dealing with different aspects which are covered in the broad spectrum of this machine design. In today's session, we are going to look at the manufacturing aspects which we must incorporate in the phase of machine design itself so as to get a better economic and efficient product. So let us begin with it. So students, the conventional way or conventional process of the overall product design is we go for the machine design and then the production drawings are created. After that, the production actually takes place and the final product is done. In between, there is one more thing that is the actual manufacturing takes place. Now, this is of course conventional process and there has to be some drawbacks. The drawback is there. There are certain things that if not taken care in the beginning itself, the manufacturing process may get delayed. So time consumption will be more or that may be costly or there will be some failure or there is in many of the cases the manufacturing is not possible at all for that particular product. So there this conventional process lags behind for the betterment and the optimum path of the overall product design and development. With the modern technologies and tools and understanding of all these processes, basically concurrent engineering, they brought in this domain altogether to reduce this system or to alter this system so as to make it more efficient and better. The advanced technologies are shown. Machine design will directly deal with the manufacturing methods. If there are certain corrections, it will come back to the machine design that will be taken care and then again manufacturing methods will be taken care of. After this only production drawings will be created and then actual manufacturing will take place. And this is how it is important to incorporate the manufacturing methods and aspects in the beginning step of machine design itself so that the rework will be saved and the flow will be only one way and there will be a lot of saving of time will happen. Now, like we are discussing about the different aspects which we should use for the manufacturing methods. Let us look at some of the important aspects. Of course, there are many more, but some of the important aspects which are the basic aspects, let us look at. The very first is the casting processes. Now, in the beginning itself, we should decide the product, the material that is to be used and which is this procedure to make that material. For example, it's a very simple structure of a bar. It is very simple to make it out of the plate given and then we can do the cutting procedure. But if the product itself is a complex one, complex in shape, it has many in goes and out goes, simple holes and different structures in there. It is very difficult to produce that particular part using the conventional machining methods. In all such methods, we have to use a better one and specified method, which is of course called as casting procedure. Casting procedure is very simple where the molten material is converted to the desired complex shape. Of course, we are going to look at it in detail, but there you should know that casting procedure, of course, we have done this in production processes also but their molten material is converted to the desired shape. The benefit is we can create any complex shape, but the disadvantage is stresses don't work in proper manner in all such cases. So we have to take care of those things separately. So that is only a disadvantage that we have. But in this case, casting procedure should be taken care of before the actual machining procedure starts. The second one is the deformation processes. Now, it, these are the simple processes where hot or cold material or the part undergoes plastic deformation to the desired shapes. It can be rolling, it can be stamping, it can be forging or anything like that. But the deformation procedures are quite conveniently used and conventionally used for the simple shapes. Limitations on shapes. The disadvantage is that 
there is a limitation on the shapes that we can create using deformation process. The limitation is a subjective word here and I am comparing to the complex shapes that we can create with the casting procedures. Can't be done with the deformation processes. The advantage is the stresses are quite balanced here and they can be easily taken care of by certain hardening procedures or the heat treatments. The next one is the material removal cutting processes. Now many a times whenever the production is done or the manufacturing of certain product is done, there is always some extra material that remains which has to be cut or which has to be removed. So in the beginning itself, during the machining procedure, we should take care of these cutting procedures and the removal techniques, the best of them, the optimum of them, so as the material removal will be less and a different setup that we have to use for this, we may have to use for this removal or the cutting procedure will not cost more to the actual cost of this product. Then tool and machine to be used for these processes have to be predetermined, that is what I am saying and the material wastage should be avoided in certain manner and that is how we should take care of all these things in the beginning itself so that it will be a very crystal clear idea for us during the machine design procedure that which manufacturing method is to be used at the end so that we can alter the design we can go for the alternative design aspects and incorporate them in that manner the next one is the assembly means now many of the products don't come in one piece, there has to be some up assembly. In that case, bolting, riveting, welding, etc. and many fastening ways can be used. So these alternative things should be taken care during the machining procedure or machine design procedure itself so that the material and the components will be selected accordingly. The next one is the, and very important again, selection of optimum manufacturing methods. This is very important and highly categorized thing where we have to consider, we have to use the optimum manufacturing procedure for the certain component. For example, if the bar is to be desired, a simple rolling will do. But if a complex structure is required, we may have to go for the casting procedure. If a strength wise component is required, we will go for the forging procedure and so on. The very first is material to be used alternative to be available. We must consider the materials and their alternatives so that they can be used effectively for a better and safe and the strong design. Next is cost of manufacturing. It is a very important criteria we have to consider in the beginning itself. If we go on designing it very randomly at the end, we may land in a situation where the cost of manufacturing will be very high. But in that case, if we take care of this particular factor in the beginning itself, at the end, we will land in a very economic manner of manufacturing only. The next is the geometric shape or component. If the geometric shape of the component is very simple, we can go for the simple procedures like deformation processes. But if it is complex at the beginning itself, we should know that we are going for the casting. Accordingly, material we should use and accordingly the different criteria of say material removal and other things we can use in the beginning step of the machine design procedure. The next come to the machine surface finish and tolerance required. Now this is very important as far as the aesthetics are considered. Some of the components need very finite or very minute detailing and minute surface finish but in certain process or certain products we don't require them and that's why at the beginning itself we should take care of the surface finish and tolerances for example if a product is casted the surface finish is not that good it's poor but if the deformed one or deformed procedure is used we can go for a better surface finish so accordingly we can design and decide in the beginning itself. The last but not the least of course the volume of production is very important. If we design a product in such a way that it is feasible to make that product in volume in mass size of course as per the requirement it is beneficial for us. For example a clamping for one of the products if drilling is important we must clamp it. 
But if the clamping provision is not given in the beginning itself, it will be difficult to provide that particular facility of clamping to the product and then do the actual machining of drilling. Instead, if I know this particular criteria in the beginning itself, I'll take care of that criteria in the machine design step itself. I'll make the provision so that the drilling will be an easy thing thereafter. So these are some of the important aspects that we need to take care in the beginning itself, in the beginning of the machine design domain itself, so that the design will be very accurate and design will be very economic as far as the manufacturing procedures are concerned. To avoid the material wastage and to save the money as well as to save the time. So that was from my side in this session. In the next session we will look at casting procedures and how their designs are affected by different simple tricks. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.